Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. In today's video, we're going to talk about the NBA draft and go into the game of Kennedy Chandler from Tennessee. Some things about Kennedy Chandler's background real quick. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. He went to high school at Sunrise Christian Academy. He is 19 years old and he decided to go to Tennessee for his freshman season. And he had a great season for the Volunteers. As he was an All-SEC second team player, he was All-SEC Tournament, SEC Tournament MVP, Bob Cousy Award finalist, and All-SEC freshman. Now let's talk about some stats real quick. He was averaging 13.9 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 4.7 assists. He shot 46.4% from the field, 38.3% from three. His effective field goal percentage was 52.7%. He took good shots in good spots. His free throws weren't great, shooting 60.6%. He averaged over two steals per game and had an assist to turnover ratio of 1.89. He had a great season in Tennessee. And in this video, we're gonna dive into this game and see how he can impact in the NBA as a rookie. So we're gonna start off this video by talking about some of his strengths. Chandler is an elitely quick athlete and a solid athlete at that. He showed his quickness and explosion at the college level, able to blow by almost anyone and everyone in every type of situation, whether that meant on the break, in the half court, in ISOs. He was really hard to stay in front of with his elite first step. Along with that, he's also a pretty good athlete, has a nice bounce to him, is able to finish above the rim in situations they could, but if not, he's strong, he has a good base to him, he's able to finish through contact, and his ability and quickness, he's under control with it. He's fast, but he doesn't rush, and he makes smart decisions when going downhill at full speed. Now, let's dive into his three-level scoring real quick, starting with his finishing ability. As a finisher, he is very crafty, he is skilled, he is able to score in a variety of ways deep in the paint, around the trees, he isn't the biggest guy, he's 6 feet tall, 170 pounds, but he is good at finishing at that first level. He has a nice floater, he's able to finish with his right and left hand. In this clip, you can see a really tough finish by him as he gathers with his offhand, single hand finish, blocks off the defense, and finishes with the scoop. This is a tough finish for anyone, but this type of finishing can translate to the NBA where you have to fight off bigger guys, be able to take and accept contact, and finish plays through the trees. His ability at the college level to finish could and will translate, and along with that, he was able to read off the ball, make smart decisions cutting-wise, moving and catching, and finishing tough plays. Now let's talk about second level scoring. As a second level scorer, he had a nice mid-range jumper that he was able to get to effectively, especially in ball screen situations. He does a great job of getting his feet down, being on balance, not rushing. He finds the open areas of the floor. Sometimes he did settle for two point shots, long twos, which isn't the most efficient shooting, but it works well for him and he did a good job at it. In this clip, you can see he gets his feet down, he elevates high, finishes high. He's a very solid and fundamentally sound pull-up jumper. He also has a nice floater game, but overall, he does have the ability to get downhill, find space, and score at the second level. Now, get to the third level and his ability to shoot and make shots from deep. As a three-point shooter, he did a great job at getting his feet down, he had a nice smooth stroke. The fundamentally smooth stroke that he had from two point range is the same from three. He, when his feet were down and he was on balance, he shot very well. He improved throughout the season at shooting from deep. He showed glimpses of comfort from NBA range and he has a really quick release. He was able to knock shots down over the contest of bigger guys consistently. He made tough shots from three. His percentage, I think, reflected the toughness of his shots, a lot of off the bounce, a lot of contested threes, but this scoring could translate to the next level. Now here is what I think is his greatest strength as an offensive player. He's extremely talented as a passer and has a great IQ for the game, making him a great playmaker. His ability to get his teammates on time, on target passes, able to pass with either hand, great in transition and identifying advantages, throwing it ahead, hitting a trail, doing all the right things, making correct reads consistently, great when he's downhill driving and finding the open guys in their curl actions. They found the screeners diving in this play against Arkansas. Look at this offhand pass off the dribble 
on target in the shooting pocket. That's a really tough play for most people, but he made it look easy. He throws consistently great passes. His talent as a passer is one of the best in this draft. I think that this part of his game could be huge at the next level. Now let's talk about his defensive energy and impact. As a defender, he's a dog. He's going to get up in your grill. He's really solid one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, he does tend to reach a lot. He did force over two steals a game, so forcing turnovers is huge for him. But a lot of that comes down to the pressure that he applies to the point of attack. He gets up in your grill. He was the head of the snake for Tennessee's defense, and now he has a chance at the next level to make the ball uncomfortable, get up into them. He showed the ability to switch in college, which could be huge at the next level due to the amount of switching that happens in the NBA. He will sit down, he'll get up into you. He sometimes does too much. He sometimes relies more on making a play on the ball and forcing a turnover rather than playing solid defense. But when he sits down and he plays solid and he does his job, he is one of the best defenders in this draft. And along with that, he has a great understanding and feel for the game. Great instincts as a defender where he forces turnovers in the passing lane, tips passes, is great in the gaps at forcing turnovers, and just does all these little things that make somebody a all-around good team defender. He is more than just a one-on-one -on -one guy. He's going to get up into you, but in the gaps, he's really active. He does his job. I think that as he gets to the next level, he'll have to improve against size, but we'll talk about that later in this video. But on the upside as a defender, he's switchable on the perimeter, and he can force turnovers and make plays. Now let's dive into some of his weaknesses as a player. Kennedy Chandler's size has been a major factor in his game and a lot of his weaknesses. First, we'll talk about defensively. As a defender, yes, he does a great job at applying pressure and making plays, but that was affected heavily in ball screen actions when he couldn't get over the screen. If it was a great screen not called out, he got thumped by it and couldn't recover in plays. Against on ball, one on one, if a guy was bigger than him, a skilled wing that had size, he was able to get just by him, use his body, force him into guarding one on one. It's really tough for him to stay solid, stay in front against bigger guys, and this type of thing could really affect him at the next level. Now, offensively, when it comes to his size, we talked about his finishing ability and his quickness, but against bigger guys with great length and athletic ability, it was tough for him to get by. It was really tough for him too, against the help side of making these tough finishes that he's good at. The size affected him at times. I think he improved throughout the season at finishing through and around size, but difficulty that he showed earlier in the season is something of concern going into the NBA. Now let's talk about his decision making that was questionable at times and we'll start at the offensive end. Sometimes he was out of control. Sometimes he made rushed and harsh decisions rather than taking his time, making the smart play, not rushing. His shot selection at times was not the best, trying to force plays deep in the paint, trying to force mid-range jumpers rather than moving the ball and making the smart, simple play. He consistently made off-balance decisions, passing off of one foot, passing in the air. Sometimes in transition, he was rushed. This is all, I think, part of maturing, though, as a player. He is 19 years old. He has a lot of room to grow and develop in this and just become a consistently good playmaker. He showed a lot of great playmaking, a lot of great decision-making as an offensive player. But I think as he continues to mature and learn the game at a higher level, He'll just continue to get better and not have these downfalls. Now let's talk about his decision making as a defender. As a defender, he overextended himself at times, tried to do too much, tried to make a play rather than stay solid. He needs to just be able to sit down, apply pressure to the ball, and as he just does this, that'll make him tenfold better. He is a really solid one-on-one -on -one defender, able to affect the game at a high level at this end of the floor. So the more he's able to just do his job, be solid, not overextend, not overdo it, he will be a really quality player on the perimeter at the next level. Now to wrap things up, Kennedy Chandler could be a phenomenal pickup late in the first round, early second round, due to his quickness, his playmaking, his ability to score at three levels, and his defensive aggressiveness and just overall physicality at the point. 
He does have some weaknesses being six foot tall, 170 pounds, and also his decision making was up and down at times. But overall, he is a talented player and somebody that could really make an impact in the NBA. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something about Kennedy Chandler as the NBA draft approaches. For more content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we will catch you in the next one.